My next guest takes on Sabah Hamasi coming up here at UFC 218 on December 2nd. It's Razak Al Hassan joining me here on the program for the very first time. Razak, how are you? I'm good. Is so? I'm doing very well. Appreciate you joining me here. And uh, first time I've had you on the show, and I'm sure a lot of my audience are familiar with you in the UFC, but I want to go all the way back. And I saw that you uh, were, were, grew up in uh, Minnesota. Um, what was that like, uh, you know, growing up in a cold place like that? Oh, very cold. And it was kind of strange. A lot of people will ask me, for someone who moved from Africa, why would you move to a place like that in the first place? But um, I, had, I had friends, I had family in there. I met someone there. So, uh, and, and the judo coach that was helping me pursue my judo career lived there too. So that was why I, I chose to live there. Okay, excellent. So just to clarify, you were born in Africa though, and then you moved over? Yes, I was born in Ghana. Oh, interesting. Okay, because on Tapology, for some reason, they have you as born in Minnesota. And I was like, that's kind of weird. A guy like, you know, that, that has your name. That doesn't seem very common, right? So, No. Okay. I was born in Ghana, and then I moved here, I think, 2017. Oh, sorry. 2007 is when I moved here. Oh, gotcha. And what, what, was, the, what was the transition like, you know, going from, uh, you, know, uh, you know, coming over to the States? It must have been a bit of a culture shock. Uh, it was. But for me, at the same time, I was very happy. The reason why I was very happy because of from where I came from, I was very poor, and there's a lot of things you see here that was not back there. So I was happy at the same time. This this culture shock, but I was happy at the same time because I was like, oh, you know, it's way much better from where I'm from and where I used to live. You know. Fair enough. Um, how'd you get involved in combat sports? Um, it wasn't something I wanted to do. I wanted to do judo. Judo was my uh, my calling. My brother was in the judo national team. So I wanted to be like him. So I wanted to follow him and do it with him. But I guess he didn't want me to do it. So um, I followed him one time when he was going to training without him knowing. I got there. I waited till he started training. And I went to the Japanese coach and I told him, hey, I wanted to start judo. So And then that's when they, he told me, you can start today if you want to. So I joined the mat and started. My brother was so pissed off. But he, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing he could do about it. But But I ended up sticking with the judo. And he ended up stopping. So... I was pretty much the number one in Ghana in my division the whole time till I moved here. Um, and when I moved here, the judo gym that I train at, my kickboxing coach was hired to teach kickboxing there. Oh, interesting. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So he, he saw me and was like, hey, I'm, I've been watching you train and you're very good. You know, you're very athletic. And I want you to do kickboxing. I was like, no, kickboxing is not part of my, I do not want to go do kickboxing. I want to go to the Olympics. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want you to, you know, fight. I just want you to do it to help you cut your weight for judo. I guess he was <laughs> lying to me then. So I started. In about two months while I started, he came to me and was like, hey, I found you a fight. I was like, I told you I don't want to fight. <laughs> you're like totally against it, fight. yeah. Yes, I, was, I didn't want to do it. But it's like, you're very good. You're very um, talented. You're very strong. And I want you to try to kickbox. And I really didn't. I was so scared. He still talked me into it. And then I ended up doing the kickboxing fight and I won um, in the first round with a lot of kicks and I stopped the guy. So I thought that was it. I'm not going to hear about fighting again, but no, he got me the second time again and I ended up fighting. I won by knockout. And from there I can see myself liking it a little bit. Right. Bit by bit. Cause then you I'll, get addicted, right? Like once you, once you start yes. winning, right? Yes. So after the third kickboxing fight, I was like, okay, let's go. I guess I have talent for it. So let's, let's do it. So, that's when I got into yeah. So how did you go from Minnesota to Texas where you train now at uh, Team Takedown? Um, that, I moved here to Texas because of Team Takedown. They, they also hired my kickboxing coach at that time. Oh, back that home. makes sense. Team Takedown wanted to employ him, and then he told them, I have a fighter that I do not want to live back home, that he's very good. And, uh, and they, t- they said, okay, bring him out. We, we want to see him train with Johnny and if he's very good we will you know we'll pay him to come and train with Johnny so they brought me in to spar with Johnny one time so when I came here I spar with Johnny and it was like oh we really like him um you want to pay him to be Johnny's sparring training partner to spar with him so at that time I was working for Delta Airlines so I was able to fly here to Texas for four days and then go back home to Minnesota for three days um, so that's how I started coming back and forth. And then they ended up signing me to the team and then asked me to move down here. So. Very cool. And the weather's a lot better in Texas than it is in Minnesota. Way better. <laughs> I'm, Way sure that was the, better. I'm sure that was a nice part yeah. of it, too. Um, you, yeah. you mentioned working for Delta Airlines. Do you still have a day job uh, on top of fighting? 
Um, right now, right now, no, I, I, I manage kind of like a security. Oh, okay. Um, in here in um in Texas and forward. Um, I'm, I'm the manager there at, at a bar for the security guys, so I do it at night. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's talk about this fight. Um, you're taking on Sabah Hamasi. Uh, he's got the 11 and 6 record. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Um, like I, I don't know. I don't know. People do not know this about me, but I do not watch my opening. Oh, cool. I okay. Do not watch so, um, but my coaches watch that fight, and then we train according to because I do not want to worry about what they do. I want to worry about what I can do. Pretty much. Uh, in the fight, but for me, I feel like I, I match up best with him. You know, he he likes to stand. Uh, from what I know, he likes to stand, but he likes to take people down too. And I like people that want to stand with me and throw with me too. So, um, I hopefully he comes in, you know, so we can throw instead of trying to take me down. But hey, if he's gonna take me down, I'm ready for that because I've been working hard. So nobody will ever take me down again. And you should know you come from Team Takedown, so I assume you know how to stop a takedown, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that helps, too. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing I look at this fight, uh, too, is that he hasn't fought since August of uh, 2016, so he's had a bit of a layoff coming into this one. I don't know if you're aware of that, but uh, do you feel like that's going to play a factor in this fight? Yeah, I guess it depends on everybody. Uh, for me, it, it hasn't really, because for me, I feel like when I'm out of the ring for a long time, Usually, I'm more itching to get back in the ring because um, before I got into the UFC, getting a fight was really hard for me. I never, I'll get a fight and then the person will not take the fight. Nobody want to take a fight with me, so I usually get the, the the short notice fights. So every time I go in there, I'm kind of hyped up. I want to go right away. So I don't know about him. I don't know how if that is gonna affect him or not. But some people it does not really affect them. So I don't know how to come out. And and how's the uh, you mentioned uh, you know training camp and everything? Um, who are some of your main training partners that you've been working with ahead of this matchup? Um, right now I have um, Vic, Victor Rayner. He fights for um, um, America Combate. Okay, nice. And then I saw train with Johnny Hendricks when he's home. He, he's been going to um, um, Jackson's, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But when he when he gets home, I train with him. Before he went to Jackson, I was training with him here too. Um, so and I have Will Starks. Oh, nice. Um, okay. He, yeah, I know Will. Yeah. 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 So I, I, train, I train with them too. So I train with them too. So I have a lot of training partners. A lot of them are not well known, but they are all good training partners no, uh, that I have. I, I'd agree with that. Um, how's the weight cut going? I mean, uh, that, when does that process start for you? Because this fight isn't until December 2nd. Yeah, the, the weight cut is going good. I'm, 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 I'm taking it slowly because usually all my fights, I cut my weight so quick. Like I'll be on weight like two days before my fight. Uh, and stuff like that, and I'll be looking so small. So this time I'm trying to change the process a little bit so I do not cut too fast. So I can, I can, you know, not be too skinny at the same time. Don't be too big at the same time. So I'm trying I'm trying something different this time. Okay, interesting. Uh, how do you sort of see this fight ending on December 2nd? I mean, you're going to win. You wouldn't have taken the fight, but how do you sort of see it unfolding? For me... I, I see myself knocking him out. That's that's what I want to. That's what I always want to do. But as as the fight goes, you never know what's going to happen. But for me, I see I see me, I can see myself destroying him. That's that's for sure. Um, and I'm not the kind of person that I want to call. I'll finish him in round one or round two. You know, um, anything can happen in the ring. It's you know. But for me, I see myself stopping him. Before I let you go here, um, I know you're not looking past your opponent, but do you sort of have an idea of when you want to fight after this? Uh, let's say you go in there, you get the knockout like you say you're going to. Do you want to get right back in there early 2018, or are you looking to take some time off? No, I do not want to take a time off. <laughs> I want to get back right in there because um, my, my last two fights, it's been, there's been too many, just it's Gaps, been too yeah. long, and, and I do not like that. So even if, by God's grace, this fight goes very well, even in February or January, if there's something, I want to get back right in there right away if I can. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take any time off. You know, I was injured the, the the last one too, so it took me a long time for me to. So I do not, I don't want to take a time off. I want to get back right in. Um, do you ever get back to, to Ghana at all? Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, being born there. Do you ever fly back uh, at, at any point, or is it just too tough with your fight schedule? Um, I haven't been there for a while, um, and I was going there because of my mom. Um, my, my dad passed away a while back. So I was usually going there because of my mom, but I haven't been there for a while. But now I brought my mom here, actually. Oh, great. I brought her yeah, so she's been here for like three weeks now, so I'm really happy to have her here. So um, it, it's kind of is, is she living here now or is she just visiting? 
Yeah, she says she's going to live here for a while. Oh, great! Oh, that's good. That must be. It's always nice having mom around, right? Like, yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. But this, the part that sucks is I cannot eat her food right now. Right. You got no. Do, this, this is what you got to do. You got to put it in the freezer, and then after the fight, you can have it and and, cook, and put it in the microwave. <laughs> exactly. That's that's the plan. When I'm coming back, I'm going to make sure I, I'll tell her so she can make some of her homemade food. So when I'm coming back, I can just eat her food right when I get back. There home. you go. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um. Last question for you here. We've talked all about your fight career and everything. What do you like doing on your downtime? Uh, do you like watching movies? Do you like uh, playing video games? Do you like watching other sports? What would I find you doing? Um, I mean, I, usually, you see, you watch me uh, watching TV pretty much. Um, I do not play games much. I'll buy the video games. I'll see people playing. I'll buy the game, but I'll not really play it. Uh, yeah, I'll pretty much you see me uh, with my, some of my friends um, playing some soccer somewhere or with my son, usually. So, I don't, yeah, besides training and, and sitting at home and watching TV and playing with my son, I don't do much at all. It, it's tough as a fighter, right? You got so much, uh, so so many responsibilities. So I, I, I hear you on that. What, what are you watching on TV right now? Are you a Netflix guy, Hulu guy? What are you watching these days? I'm, I'm more of Netflix and, you know, like Rick and Morty. <laughs> Rick and Morty, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, that's a great show. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that show. And then um, I watch some shows um, like Archer, um, Breaking Bad and stuff like that, you know. Those are all good choices, and and you, you seem to like the cartoons, which is good because I know Archer yeah. and uh, Rick and Morty, right? So yes, I, I really like the cartoons. I don't know why I, I like watching the cartoons, the adult cartoons and stuff like that. I like watching them. Awesome. Well, uh, Razak, I, I can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program. Just to remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you have any sponsors or shoutouts or anything like that, the floor is yours. John, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, I'm Razak Judo on um, Instagram and Judo Razak on Twitter. And on Facebook, it's just Razak Al Hassan, and then you'll find me there. And um, I want to thank um, On It and Specimen Fight Gear, um, Forward Float, you know, for helping me, you know, with my training camp and everything. And also um, Fit Fight Mail for prepping my food and stuff like that. Yeah. 